Now to close this uh, introduction, I'm going to uh, do a little example of how to go about and designing a, a form using the, the Smart Grid extension. Uh, a couple of uh, months back, I had to do a project where uh, a house rental business needed to capture some information about uh, the, the the rental party. Uh, they needed to, to get the name, the contact number, but they wanted also to have a, a guest list, adults guest list, how many uh, senior citizens were uh, in the party, uh, what were the, the children accompanying the party and their ages. And finally, they wanted to capture if they, um, the rental party required some basic uh, kitchen facilities in addition to the to the kitchen of the kitchen equipment available there uh, including as well some maybe some house facilities um, such as board games or coffee brewer or something like this and there uh, they already had a form which looked something like this which is basically a contact form 7 default form and as you can see the form is uh, doesn't actually uh, hold into a single page uh, so it, it would be much nicer to have a form that is uh, um, split into columns, therefore utilizing the the width of the the width of the the screen more efficiently, uh, and therefore not having to to scroll down in order to fill the entire form. So this is actually achievable using um, the uh, grid editor. Um, and you can see here, this is the contact form 7 um, uh, form, uh, the original form, which is obviously only uh, editable within the HTML editor. Um, and, and therefore, we're going to use these, uh, these fields and recreate now a new, a new form. So we start with a new, um, a new form let me just refresh this page and there's some update on the there we are um so we had a we let's add a new a new form uh in fact i'm not going to do so i'm going to start a new form in a new tab because i'm going to be wanting to refer back to this um uh form for the fields so let's let's create a new tab with a new field okay um there's the ability to toggle it in full screen so let's give this a name um, we're going to call it the house rental uh, grid layout grid layout form there we are um let's uh, publish it so we can have the the form key appear here there we go and because we want to start a new form, we're going to uh, scrap the HTML, clear the HTML editor and start with a fresh row and column. Um, in addition, oops, I need some battery charge. Let me just charge the battery. There we go. You can actually toggle this, this form into full screen to make it actually easier to, to, to develop initially. So let's, let's, let's shift over to full screen. Here we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a two column layout. Um, so I'm going to start by splitting this uh, row into two. Um, on the left hand side, I'm going to put the, um, the contact details as well as um, the, um, uh, the kitchen and, and home facilities. And on the right side, we'll, capture, we'll have the two um, uh, text areas which are um, for the the adults guest list as well as the children's guest list because th those are fields that are quite large quite that occupy quite a lot of heights and therefore we were going to split them up into a separate uh, column so let's start here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert this into a grid here we go uh, and I'm going to convert the right side also into a grid. Here I'm going to add an extra row. We're going to put this here is going to be our adults uh, guests. Now let's grab the information. What was that called? Text area, your guests. Okay. Um, and let's say that uh, we also want them to indicate whether any are senior citizens. Uh, please indicate senior 
podcasts above the age of 16 there we go so so within the within the text area they can actually indicate if anybody is above uh, 60 and here we can have the children's guests children guests mm, what did i call this this was um text area children um indicates children ages um, name and ages of child guests children guests okay okay and on this side we're going to put in uh let's 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 do an additional row so this here we're going to have um the home facilities facilities here we're gonna have the kitchen facilities um and then we're gonna split this into two rows we're gonna make that the name contact number um, where is that your phone there we go um, and let's say also that we want them to put in to give us ideally a um, mobile number where we want some uh, ideally preferably preferably what up enables um, then this would be the name let's put a text area your name there we go and here we should tell them that we want their full name your full name okay so we can recognize it against the the reservation uh, contract um, that that has been already done now the kitchen facilities we already have them we've created them here uh, kitchen facilities you'll notice that um when you are actually working within the um text editor the the scrolling facilities on the page is disabled and this is basically so that you don't have to keep when you have a long form and you keep scrolling all the way down you don't suddenly the, the entire page doesn't suddenly scroll up as well therefore losing the the view of the of the editor so you need to be out of the editor in order to scroll your page up and down uh, by default once you're inside it um, it just gets disabled so we have our kitchen facilities we're going to stick that into this field here um i'm pressing tab to move to the next field and then we have the house facilities here which is a, a set of check boxes and we're going to insert it here and we're going to tell them uh, we're going to say to our users select as many as required and we're going to copy this and we're going to place it down here as well good so there we go this this is our, our form layout we still need a summit button so let let's add a new row down the bottom here and we want our, our summit button idea to be to appear somewhere down here so we're going to resize this column into let's say um a quarter of the the width of the form uh, we're going to offset it down to the end three quarters and here we don't need a field label because this is just a summit button so where is the summit uh, here's the summit tag uh, submit label and then we insert the tag there we go and you you notice that as soon as you enter a submit tag um, the cell uh, resizes itself to you know to hide the label and the tip because obviously you don't need that for a button 
So now I'm going to remove, come out of uh, full screen mode and I'm going to save this form. So here we are. Okay. And we need to add this to um, to a page. So let's do this. And I've already got a page with um, uh, our rental form. Um, our rental grid layout form. Yeah, and that's the one. Okay, so here here's the form uh, that I've just created. Uh, it looks it looks much better than what we had before. And if you let me load both of them uh, side by side, so we can actually compare the two forms. Page. So here we are. This is the original form, which is the contact form seven uh, form without the smart grid um, design. Uh, and you can see the the form is uh, doesn't actually hold on the page. And this is the new form that we just designed. Uh, and it's a lot more compact, as you can see. The entire form fits on the page, which is obviously a much nicer to to for users to fill in. But there's a little bit of gap here. We could really improve this a little bit more. Um, I feel this is not enough. There's not enough space here for the name to be filled in. Uh, so we could really put these on two separate uh, uh, rows. So let's go back. Um, let's go back and close this. I don't need that anymore. Let's go back and edit uh the form here we go and here instead what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to add an extra row here uh i'm going to split this remove this column shift this down here because now we have the space and finally delete this this column you notice that when you have a single column inside a row you can actually delete it and that's just that's just to prevent to have um uh, often rows uh, HTML structures in the back end so you you know you can delete an entire row but you cannot just delete a single column uh, within a row uh, similarly you cannot delete um, the the first row which is this one here there's no delete functionality here okay um, and then we want to make this actually a full width uh, let's make that full width There we go. Now let's update this. And uh, let's go back to, I can close this tab and reload this page. So now you see the, the name and the contact number are taking up the entire uh, width of this first column. And it's looking a little bit better. We still have a little bit of space here. And I feel this could be used to try and make these kitchen facilities to somehow highlight these kitchen facilities a little bit more, make it more obvious what they are. Right now, they, they all seem to be um, kind of a single set of uh, check boxes to fill in. It would be nicer maybe to, to have a little bit more space and to, you know, a bit more breathing space to these two fields here. So let's see what we can do to improve this. And one thing we can definitely do is we now move across to the HTML structure, which is here. Um, but specifically, what we want to do is we want to actually adjust these fields here. So let's let's use this nifty little uh, navigation to to take us to the HTML structure. Here we are, and these are the two rows. This is the 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 home facilities and the kitchen facilities. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra column called highlights an extra class or an extra class in my row uh, elements and I'm going to do the same thing to this uh, um, house uh, facilities so both of these rows are now going to have this extra class called highlight and I'm going to use this to further customize my front end um, so here what I'm now going to if I reload this page okay and then inspect uh this element here here is the the label uh, here's the fields and here is the column but as you can see now the entire row and because we, because the column and the row are, are essentially basically the same thing they both occupy the entire uh, width of this column here they we can just use the row as the um as the element to to customize and we have one here 
and we have the second one um, over here within the container you can see here here's the second row which is so we, we could have used a container or we can use a row that doesn't make much uh, difference anyway so we have two two row highlighted here and uh, you can see that um, the, the the row has got the plugin is adding a little bit of styling uh, with setting the margins to zero so we want to change that we want to actually add a little bit of margin to to have a bit, bit more breathing space so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this uh, this default styling for this row I'm gonna add a new styling uh, let me make a bit more space here we go uh, let's put a new um, a new rule here I'm gonna paste in the the rule name that I used here so that we can make sure we can override it properly otherwise what will happen is that there will be a clash uh, and I'm going to put dot highlights because this is the 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 specific rows which you've got this class highlights which I've um, I've added and you can see now that I can actually anything that I do within this rule is going to affect both of these rows uh, so th we're going to start by adding a little extra margin around um, the top and the bottom uh, so we're going to put five pixel at the top and we're going to put zero zero margins on the top and bottom now is that enough let's let's see if i if i play around and increase this now you can see here you can you can visualize here as i change my uh my row here with the up and down arrows you can visualize the um the rows actually increasing and, and we can so let, let's add a little bit extra space maybe we'll add a little bit of padding as well um let's let's leave it at 10 pixel uh, let's put a border maybe that might be a nice way to highlight these uh, these different sections um, one pixel solid let's make it red um, let's put a little bit of border radius uh, so it doesn't look too sharp so let's make five pixel uh, there we go or maybe a bit less let's make it three pixel yeah, that's nice let's put a bit of padding within this row um, let's put a five pixel padding around uh, that looks quite good for the side padding but I'm gonna increase the top padding maybe to um, 10 pixel so let's increase this uh, this padding to 10 pixel yeah that looks pretty good you can now copy these rules uh, so here I'm going to copy this rule and in the uh, form editor we're now going to add a custom CSS file and we're simply going to paste the uh, rule that we created uh, in in our CSS file and once we now that we update the the form this uh, CSS file should automatically get uploaded uh, on the same page so let's reload this page and you see on reloading the CSS are now being taken into account and if I inspect the element the elements um, I should be able to see that you see there you go the CSS file is now being loaded uh, directly from my uh, theme folder where it has been saved uh, and it has been saved using the same um, form unique key uh, for the file name as was used uh, in in the form it uses this this uh, form key in order to identify the correct file to load so there you go this is a small example on how to actually use the smart grid layout to design forms that are a lot more um, uh, a lot more um, flexible and and uh, creative than uh, the default uh, contact form 7 plugin see you in the next tutorial